Hello, uh, welcome today. Uh, I'm Paul Harmatz, a pediatric gastroenterologist at uh, UCSF Benioff Children's Hospital, Oakland, Oakland, California. And you might wonder how a pediatric gastroenterologist became involved in lysosomal storage disease. Most of my background is with mucopolysaccharidosis, uh, which is a collection of diseases that have um, are much more common than Farber, but um, have very uh, strong similarities in the uh, biochemistry and um, uh, disease manifestations and some of the um, possible therapies. So I will um, give you some background from my MPS to, to help tide you over and understand uh, a much less common Farber disease. So just a, a bit of background to set the framework where Farber disease resides as a clinical problem. You probably are well aware that there are estimates of 5,000 to 6,000 Mendelian genetic diseases of this large number, a much smaller number of 500 are metabolic disorders, or as you would, could also call them, inherited metabolic diseases. And most of these are single Mendelian gene inherited disorders. Within that group of inherited disorders of metabolism, inborn errors of metabolism, you find 50 lysosomal storage disease, or more than 50. And this group will later show you a, a picture of the range of diseases that we see. But within this group of 50, we have 10 that fall into the sphingolipidosis category. And this is a, a very common group of diseases, probably prevalence in one to 10,000, which relatively speaking is common because you're comparing Farber, which is one of these sphingolipidoses, and you have a one in a million prevalence or birth incidence in this category. So think of most of the talk will focus on lysosomal storage disease, and within that group, um, 10 sphingolipidoses, and then Farber disease as a component of the sphingolipidosis group. In this slide, we're, we're giving a little bit of background of the lysosome, which classically was just thought of as a digestive factory breaking down cell components that could be recycled. But over the 70 years since Duduv described the lysosome as an organelle, it's gained an amazingly broad range of, of functions and complexities. And many of these are summarized in this slide in a review article with Bella Bio that is cited at the bottom. So think of the, the hydrolases in the center in the acid environment that digest products. There are also enzyme activators. There are transport proteins that move molecules in and out of the cell, all of which are critical and a mutation in uh, the gene that makes these proteins would likely to result in a, in a disease. But in addition, you have cell transporters on the surface for ions, hydrogen, cholesterol. You have systems for moving the lysosome around. You have influences of the lysosome on cell membrane repair, transcription. It has gone from a very simple organ to a very complex biochemical system. And now we're moving to give you a, a little more depth on lysosomal storage disease. Lysosomal storage disease is really categorized based on the type of material that's that's stored. And I said I spent most of my time looking at mucopolysaccharide diseases in that group, the mucopolysaccharides, different types of glycosaminoglycans, dermatin sulfate, heparin sulfate, keratin sulfate are stored in excess because we are missing an enzyme with a sphingolipid. We have sugars attached to a fat, this, and it results in storage of materials in the sphingolipid digestive pathway, whether it's ceramide or sphingosine 1-phosphate, a variety of different compounds. There are also oligosaccharide storage diseases or glycogen storage diseases. So base your 
categorization on the type of storage material. Overall, the, we mentioned that the lysosomal storage diseases make up this group of 50, and they're re relatively common, one in 8,000 if we take the whole group of lysosomal storage diseases. It, it has a frequency approaching that of cystic fibrosis. So it's a major problem and, and is a focus of uh, biochemical geneticists and geneticists around the world. This slide shows the same grouping based on storage material, but defines the disease, the gene that is responsible for the disease under each of the groupings. And so if you look at the group's sphingolipidosis, you'll see very common Gaucher disease, Fabre disease that people are quite familiar with and make up most of the, the grouping. You also see Crab A disease, well-known with newborn screening, Tay-Sachs disease, but Farber disease is, fits within this group. And then you have other groups that you're quite familiar with. Mucopolysaccharide storage disease probably is your second group that you're most familiar with. Pompe disease, a glycogen storage disease. So it's not all glycogen storage disease, but the glycogen storage disease type 2, Pompeii disease, falls into this category. Thank you very much. It's been uh, my pleasure to, to um, provide some background and um, information about a very important look, but rare lysosomal storage disease. And I, I hope you will remember the, the triad for Farber and uh, find um, a chance to identify a patient and um, hopefully in the near future we will have um, improved therapies and ability to to take care of these patients well thank you